Well, elsewhere today, of course, MPs will be grilling the BBC boss Tim Davey this afternoon. We're expecting, or this morning rather, we're expecting uh, particular points of pressure to be the licence fee and the decision to appoint Jess Brammer, the former editor of the left-wing website HuffPost UK, as editor of the BBC's news channels. Brammer's appointment was snuck out on reshuffle day, so very few people reported it prominently. She's been criticised for deleting hundreds of her tweets in the run-up to the appointment, many of them reportedly poking fun at the Prime Minister. Well, this is just going to be one of those topics that is brought up with the uh, BBC Director General later on. Let's talk now to Philip Booth, Professor of Economics and Director of the Vincent Centre for the Public Understanding of Economics and Entrepreneurship at the University of Buckingham. Welcome to the show, Philip. Um, first of all, we've got this extraordinary time where I think Conservative MPs are more likely than they ever have been before to speak out against the way that the BBC is funded and operates as a public mm -hmm. sector broadcaster. Yeah. What kind of pressure is this organisation facing? I think it's facing a great deal of pressure because there is really no way you can justify the current model of funding. Now, very many people uh, have to pay the licence fee who don't really wish to avail themselves of the BBC services. And, of course, it's very easy for people to uh, actually use the BBC services without paying the licence fee. In the 21st century, it's extremely difficult to justify forcing people to pay for a TV channel that they don't want to watch when there are plenty of other uh, ways of uh, ensuring that the, the funding is uh, fair, reasonable, and uh, provided by those people who value the services of the BBC, which will be very many people, I should add. I don't know what the BBC fears uh, from the removal of uh, compulsory funding streams. Mm. It, it sort of almost made sense, right, having a, having a licence fee back when you could walk down a road and sort of count the aerials, and every house that had an aerial, you th you'd think you'd, you'd sort of charge them mm -hmm. for, uh, for the, the access to, to the airwaves. But... We, yes. We've sort of moved on in, in the interceding 60 or 70 years, have we not? We, we have indeed. And it, did, it, did, it also made sense, of course, when there wasn't much you could do with a TV set other than watch either BBC or commercial television. And almost everybody who had a TV set did watch uh, commercial television. There were ways in which the government stopped competition, it has to be said. Um, so, uh, but um, now we've reached the, the, the current point. Uh, yeah, it, it is a total uh, anachronism that we could develop a mechanism of funding whereby uh, those people who wanted to watch the service uh, paid for it by subscription. And not only that, um, we would, that there would then be consequences, I think, for how the BBC uh, should be owned. The BBC shouldn't be a government-owned um, television uh, uh, channel and, broad and broadcasting uh, uh, business. And if it wasn't a government-owned broadcasting business, I think it will be able to leverage its reputation, especially its international reputation, because its international reputation is much better than its British reputation. It will be able to leverage its reputation, I think, and provide really good quality broadcasting services uh, to the um, English-speaking world. And we should remember that the English-speaking world is 20 times the size of the United Kingdom itself. I think the BBC could be a great international broadcasting organisation if it was independent of the state and independent of the compulsory licence fee funding stream. It's extraordinary when you look at the success of streaming services like Netflix, mm. which, uh, which really entered onto the stage at the same time in terms of streaming online content that the BBC developed their iPlayer system. Now, I, yeah. I, I can't help but thinking in an alternate stream of history, if the BBC had started charging uh, per person uh, for access to mm. iPlayer in the same way that Netflix does, it may well actually have more revenues than it does now and, and able to, to, to support journalism in a better way than it does through this tax. That's, that's absolutely true. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that there will be a basic level of subscription for access to uh, the uh, main level of services that the BBC required. But both domestically and internationally, the BBC could then uh, no, add services such as um, early viewing rights, uh, additional um, packages to the normal uh, viewing uh, packages for which it could charge more. And yes, it could develop um, much more effective uh, broadcasting with the increased revenue streams. We really are where publishing was in the, 19, in the late 19th century, where there's just an explosion of genre financing methods and, of course, great literature produced, but we didn't have a state um, uh, literature uh, book uh, company that was producing that literature, and we don't need a state broadcasting company today. 
And one of the big contentious issues that no doubt will be brought up at the committee meeting today is, of course, the appointment of Jess Brammer as head mm -hmm. of uh, BBC News channels. Now, of course, uh, Jess Brammer comes from a very left-wing background, editing HuffPo UK, that, uh, that website. Now, I, I suppose that this, is, this irks people, um, mainly because the BBC is funded in the way that it is, and mm -hmm. it's sort of compulsory. If the BBC was not funded through, in effect, a tax, these sort of appointments would be less contentious. Yes, they would indeed. Nobody questions uh, who is appointed the editor of The Guardian or the editor of The Telegraph, um, uh, or for that matter, takes all that much interest in who is appointed head of uh, ITV News. But it, it, it becomes important because we're all forced to fund it. Uh, but, but if the BBC then becomes, uh, if you like, a plaything of those uh, senior employees who wish to uh, promote a particular uh, uh, viewpoint, then uh, th that's uh, totally inappropriate. If it's independent, it could do what it likes, uh, but it, it can't uh, actually have a, a funding stream, which is a compulsory funding stream provided by everybody, and then su suggest it ought to behave totally uh, independently. Now, there's a lot of scientific work which suggests very strong um, uh, biases in the way the BBC frames issues, presents issues uh, in its interviews and, and, and this type of thing. Uh, and uh, this needs a, a addressing, but I would rather that the BBC were an independent organisation so that we didn't have to talk about it in the political sphere. Quite right there. I have to say I completely agree with you. Well, Philip, thank you very much for joining us this morning on the briefing on GB News. We'll